good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the reserve bank of india and industrial finance and in this industrial finance we have studied all in their level of institutions so in this all in the level of institutions are the industrial finance corporation of india and the industrial credit and investment corporation of india and the industrial development bank of india so last day we have studied this all in the level of institutions but even though some of the state level institutions also available in our nations to providing the finance for the industry nations today we will study about the state level institutions state level institutions for industrial finance like in national level institution for the industrial finance some of the state level institutions also available in our nations to providing the industrial finance so the government of india passed in 1951 the state financial corporation act and the state financial corporations were set up in many states so here the state level institutions the two type of the institutions are there first one is state financial corporations and the state industrial development corporations so simply we will tell the sitco first we will study about the state financial corporation so the government of india passed in 1951 the state financial corporation act and the state financial corporations were set up in many states so the state finance corporations are mainly intended for the development of small and medium industrial units within their respective states all the states also has some of the medium and small scale industries so one nations must be focusing the small and medium scale industries also because most of the gdp mainly the nearby the 40 percentage of gdp is coming from the small and medium scale industries only so the nations must be focusing on the small scale and the medium scale industries so however in some cases they extend to neighboring states as well the state finance corporations provide loans and underwriting assistance to industrial units having paid up capital and reserves not exceeding 1 crores so those small and medium scale industries are being in the need of paid up capital not exceeding the 1 crores it will be providing loans and some of the underwriting assistance to the industrial units if any of the industrial units are being in the need of underwriting assistance on the basis of any of the banking guarantees the state financial corporations will be providing the loans and underwriting assistance and not only that the small finance or the state financial corporations depend upon the idba for refinance in respect of the tam loans granted by them so whenever the state finance corporations want to provide the financial facilities to the small scale and the medium scale enterprises this bank also has to be depending upon the idb industrial development bank of india so apart from this the state financial corporations can also make temporary borrowings from the rbi and borrowings from idb and by the sale of bond so the state financial corporations also has the rights to borrowing the money from the reserve bank of india and the industrial development bank of india by borrowing the money from these two banks it will be provide the financial assistance to the entrepreneurs of small scale industries or medium scale industries next is state industrial development corporations this is also one of the state level institutions for the industrial finance the industrial development corporations have been set up by the state governments and they are wholly owned by them so all the state government has been created the sitco and it is fully owned and governed by the state government itself so without any of the central government interventions 
These institutions are not merely financing agencies. They are interested with the responsibility of accelerating the industrialization of their states. All the nations or all the states must be take the under uh, must be taking the effort to increasing the industrialization on the respective states. Then only on the basis of the resources, availability resources, the industrialization will be increased. Some of the states only will have the proper circumstances to produce any of the particular commodities. On the basis of the availability resources, all the states has to improve the industrialization. Okay. So when they are established the industrialization, if they need of having the financial assistance. So when the time of being in the need of financial assistance, so the SIDCO, the State Industrial Development Corporations will provide the industrial finance. The SIDCO provides financial assistance to industrial concerns by way of loans, guarantees and underwritings are for direct subscriptions to shares and debentures. So when they are providing underwriting the loans or direct subscriptions, subscriptions means I will tell you later. So they will providing the shares and debentures by selling the shares and debentures or issuing the shares and debentures, the state industrial development corporations will provide the financial assistance for the state level or the small and medium scale enterprises. So the project techno-economic service, the SIPCO undertake the development of industrial areas by providing all infrastructural facilities and the initiation of new growth centers. By establishing the new growth centers, it will be take the initiation, initiations in many industrial sectors. They also administer various state government incentive schemes. SIDCOs get refinance facilities from IDBA. So the SIDCO also will have the rights to borrow the money from the IDBA. They also borrow through bonds and accept deposits. So the SIDCO also will be having the rights or the power to borrow the bonds and accept the deposits. Next, monetary policy. So this is also one of the important concepts in our banking lessons. So the monetary policy is the macroeconomic policy being laid down by the central bank towards the management of supply and interest rate. Already we have studied the supply of money and controlled the interest rate is the main tools of conducting the monetary policies. So the monetary policy is the macroeconomic policies because in this macroeconomic analysis is the monetary or the money related or supply of money is being as very core places. So the supply of money only is being as a very core point of in this macroeconomic analysis. So the monetary policy is the macroeconomic policies and it will be laid down by the central bank towards the management of supply of money and the interest rate fixing the interest rate so it is the demand side economy policy used by the government of a country to achieve macroeconomic objectives like inflation consumption growth and liquidity so normally so the demand side economy policy only used by the government of a country for what mean to achieve the economic macroeconomic objectives? What are the macroeconomic objectives means? So controlling the inflation, consumption and growth and liquidity. So the monetary policy gained its significance after the World War II, thanks to the initiation made by Milton Friedman, who is associated with the doctrine of monetarism. In this monetary policies, we must know about the two concepts, the expansionary and the contractionary. The expansionary monetary policy is also called as a 
cheap money policy. The expansionary policy is a cheap money policy. When a monetary authority uses its tools to stimulate the economy. So we have studied the basis of trade cycles. So after the after the recession period, the nations have to take the more effort to improve the economy. So what are the ways or what are the undertaking is taken by the central government or the Reserve Bank of India is called as expansionary policies. Otherwise, it is called cheap money policies. An expansionary policy maintains certain interest rate at a lower than usual rate of increase the total supply of money in the economy. So when we are providing the when we are the, the, when the Reserve Bank of India lending the financial assistance with the low rate of interest that is called expansionary policy or cheap money policy. Cheap money policy means just you just you keep in your mind so the money can easily get by the way of fixing the low rate of interest. When the Reserve Bank of India fixing the low rate of interest, all the consumers or all the individual persons or all the entrepreneurs can be able to get or borrow more money from the bank. Okay, because the rate of interest is very low. Okay, because of the low rate of interest, so all the persons will borrow the money and they will have the more chance to consuming any commodity what they want. So, by the way of low rate of interest all the entrepreneurs can have the power and interest and the interest to purchasing uh, bar, uh, borrowing the money from the reserve bank or any other commercial banks okay so because of that they can be able to establish the new industries throughout the world and the states so when they are established the new industries the supply of commodities will be increased and the economy also will be recovered from the basis of recession period and the cheap money policy also it is a traditionally used to try to combat unemployment by lowering interest rate in the hope that less expensive credit will generate the business into expanding so normally one of the speculative motive of the reserve bank of india only the cheap money policy is issued so when we are reducing the rate of interest and the borrowed money so the every entrepreneurs can have the money and they can be able to get the money so next the contractionary policies the contractionary policies means also called as a dear money policy the contractionary monetary policy is dear money policy which maintains certain interest rates higher than the usual or which slows the rate of growth in the money supply or even shrinks it so and the controversy of the expansionary policies the reserve bank of india will be increasing the rate of interest on the borrowing money or lending money when we are fixing the higher rate of interest than the actual time so the entrepreneurs and the individual people also will not have the interest to borrow the money from the commercial banks so the money supply also will be come to an control and the circulation of money also will be reduced. So this slows short term economic growth and lessens inflation. So whenever the time of inflation, so the Reserve Bank of India will bring in the contractionary policies, otherwise the dear money policies. So on the basis of the dear money policies, the Reserve Bank of India will be increasing the rate of interest. So automatically, so what are the, how many of the people or the entrepreneurs are going to borrow the money? The people will not be able to borrow the money because of high rate of interest. So the contractionary monetary policy can lead to increased unemployment and depressed borrowing and spending by consumers and business. So normally, when they are providing the when they are providing the financial assistance to the entrepreneurs so the supply of commodities will be increased and the purchasing power and the amount of consuming everybody everything will be increased but by the taken up by the 
way of undertaking the dear money policies, everything will be come to an control, which can eventually result in an economic recession if implemented too vigorously. Suppose in this uh, economy, being in the recession period, so it, they will implement the dear money policies. So whatever will happen in the time of cheap money policies and in the time of dear money policies means. Suppose if the Reserve Bank of India implementing the cheap money policies, the borrowing is easy. So all the entrepreneurs, all the individual peoples also easily can get the money from the commercial bank of India. And the consumers buy more because all the entrepreneur will increase in the supply of commodities in the same time so the, all the individual also will have the more money to purchasing whatever they want so the, all the consumers will buy more commodities and the business expanded because borrowing the more money from the by the entrepreneurs they will establish the new industries and because of that so the, all the small small scale industries medium scale industries and the large scale industries also will be expand and the buying and the selling activities also will be expand next more people are employed so when there is more supply of commodities and the demand also will be increased on the basis of increasing the demand so the more people will get the employment opportunity whenever the industrializations are going to increase on the basis of expanding the level of expanding of industrialization the employment level also will be increased. Next, the people spend more money for their country. Because whenever the industrializations are going to increase, they will get the employment opportunity and they will get the remunerations in any of the farms. And their purchasing power also will be increased. And the people will spend more money on the comfortable commodities and the luxurious commodities also. Next, what will happen in the dear money policies? If the Reserve Bank of India implementing the dear money policies, what will happen in our nation's mean? So the borrowing is very difficult. The borrowing will be very difficult because the rate of interest will be very high. Because of the high rate of interest, the no entrepreneurs and the individual peoples will not ready to purchasing any commodities. Next, the consumers buy less. So, because of that, the supply of commodity will be reduced and the employment opportunities also will be reduced. So, the people's income also will be reduced if they don't have any employment opportunity. So, then automatically the consumers will be reduced their purchasing amount. Next, businesses post bond expansions. So whenever the dear money policy is existing in our nations, the entrepreneurs will not ready to expand their business premises. Because when they want to expand their business activity, they have to make more investment. So if they want to borrow the money from the bank, they will fix more rate of interest. So they will decide to postpone to postpone for expanding their industrializations. Next, unemployment increases. So as I told, if there is no production, if there is no supply of product, what will happen? So existing industries also will be closed to their business. So automatically the employment opportunity will be created and the employment opportunity will be, the unemployment problem will be increased. Next, production is reduced. Because if there is no more capital or investment mean, so the producers also will be reduced the amount of product what they are already producing. Next is the objectives of monetary policies. So in which objectives the monetary policy is going on means. The monetary policy in developed economies has to serve the functions of stabilization and maintaining proper equilibrium in the economy system. The functions of stabilization and maintaining proper equilibrium in the economy systems. So the balance of payment and the neutrality of money and whatever is 
maintaining or being or exposing as that developed economy so that tools must be as a stabilized so but in case of underdeveloped countries the monetary policy has to be more dynamic so as to meet the requirement of an expanding economy by creating suitable conditions for economic progress so on the basis of the system of economy the reserve bank of india has to arrange and taking the objectives of monetary policies so it is now widely recognized that monetary policy can be powerful tool of economic transformations if any of the nations want to become the transforming from below to rich the monetary policy is very much important the specific objectives of monetary policies are neutrality of money exchange rate stability price stability full employment economic growth and equilibrium in the balance of payment first the neutrality of money so the economists like wickstead hayek and robertson are the chief exponents of neutral money neutral money means the money supply must be in equal so they hold the view that monetary authorities should aim to the neutrality of money in the economy when we are maintaining the neutrality of money supply the inflation situations will not be create like that the deflation also will not be arises as quickly so everything will be maintained on the basis of the supply of money so on the basis of the monetary policies only so the neutrality of money will be possible so the monetary changes could be the root cause of all economic fluctuations so when we are arranged and controlled the money supply as efficient way so the economic fluctuations always will be as a reasoning so according to neutralist the monetary change causes distortions and disturbances in the proper operation of the economic system of the countries because if there is no neutrality of money supply so the again and again the inflation and the deflation situations will be created so again and again the inflation and the deflation situation is created means the economic systems will not be as equalization next exchange rate stability why we have to maintain the exchange rate in stabilization the exchange rate stability was the traditional objective of monetary authority so this was the main objective under gold standard among different countries so on the basis of the gold standard so every nation has to use the gold as a exchange but now on the basis of currency the exchange rate will be maintained or the value of the gold or value of the commodity the exchange rate will be maintained so when there was this equilibrium in the balance of payment of the country it was automatically corrected by movements so the balance of payment must be as equal if it is equal normally the economy of one nations will be correct so it was popularly known as expand the currency and credit when gold is coming in so contract currency and credit when gold is going out this system will correct the disequilibrium in the balance of payment and the exchange rate stability will be maintained the balance of payment only will bringing the proper exchange rate as the stability exchange rate so it must be noted that if there is instability in the exchange rates it would result in outflow or inflow of gold resulting in unfavorable balance of payment so on the basis of the gold only we can maintaining the exchange rate stability so therefore the stable exchange rates are advocated 
is the maintaining the proper economy okay students now i think it's enough so tomorrow we will continue that portions if you have any doubt please ask me so tomorrow we will study some of the elaborately thank you